The Russian invasion of Ukraine and the crimes that have occurred as a result have understandably prompted widespread concern throughout Europe. According to NATO's new strategic concept for the next decade, Russia is the most significant and direct threat to allies' security, as well as peace and stability in the Euro-Atlantic area. Since the inception of the North Atlantic Alliance, tensions between Russia and NATO have been high, but a potential new member might significantly alter the dynamics. Stay till the end of the video to find out more. Regardless of what Putin says in the press releases, it's safe to assume that Russia's invasion of Ukraine was inspired by the insecurities that Ukraine would join a military alliance with the US and Europe that would be a threat to Russia. However, another country is not currently a NATO member but shares the second longest border with Russia. And it's, you guessed it, Finland. Finland has always been an arch nemesis of Russia. They have fought multiple wars in the past. But the small Nordic country has upped the dynamics and is set to become a new member of NATO. Yes, Finland officially applied for NATO membership, four months after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, along with its neighbor Sweden. On July 5th, NATO member nations signed the accession protocol relating to Finland's NATO membership at NATO headquarters, making Finland an invitee of the alliance. As a NATO member, Finland will participate in NATO's collective defenses and decision-making and will consequently be covered by the security guarantees provided in Article 5 of the treaty. Moreover, the decision to apply for NATO membership will have an impact on Finland's security. The news was widely anticipated and met with widespread approval in the country. A poll found that around three-quarters of all Finns backed joining the military alliance. The invasion of Ukraine in February led Finland which shares an 830-mile border with Russia, to renounce its old practice of neutrality and military non-alignment. And inevitably, Moscow issued a warning to the Nordic countries not to join. Dmitry Peskov, a Kremlin spokesman, described Finland's NATO membership as a threat to Russia, saying it does not make our continent more stable and safe. Russia's reaction will be determined by the nature of the expansion process and the proximity of NATO's military infrastructure to Russia's borders, he said, adding that Russia will evaluate developments and take measures to keep the situation in balance and maintain their security. Finland has been a partner in the alliance for almost 30 years and is widely regarded as a capable security partner. They supplied soldiers to NATO-led operations in Afghanistan, the Balkans, and Iraq after joining NATO's Partnership for Peace in 1994. They were two of just six enhanced opportunity partners in 2014 and have subsequently worked to improve their troops' capabilities to operate alongside NATO forces. Much of Finland's preparation comes from its own battle with Moscow, which has echoes on the invasion of Ukraine. Finns fought in the terrible Winter War to keep the Soviet Union at bay in 1939-1940, but they lost a major portion of their country as a result, including their most cosmopolitan city, Vyborg, and one of their key industries. Finland has a wartime force strength of around 280,000 personnel, with an additional 900,000 trained as reservists. It continued on with conscription for all male school leavers even after the end of the Cold War, when many countries in Europe ceased and Helsinki has maintained significant defense expenditure even while others dropped in the late 1990s and 2000s. Finland's induction is intended to strengthen the alliance's eastern flank and collective defenses in northern Europe. The most major effect would be the expansion of NATO's border with Russia. Adding Finland would be more than double the length, adding around 800 miles of the border. Prior to its invasion of Ukraine in early 2022, Russia harshly condemned US and NATO leaders for NATO's post-Cold War expansion into the former Soviet bloc and demanded enforceable security assurances, including a permanent ban on new members. President Vladimir Putin has declared in recent months that Finland's membership efforts represent no direct threat to Russia, but he has warned the nation against becoming a NATO outpost or site for NATO weaponry. Russian news outlets cited Putin as warning that tensions between Moscow and Helsinki over their NATO membership we don't have problems with Sweden and Finland as we do with Ukraine, the Russian president told a news conference in the Turkmenistan capital of Ashgabat. We don't have territorial differences. If Finland and Sweden wish to, they can join. That's up to them. They can join whatever they want. He did warn that if military contingents and military infrastructure were deployed there, he would be obligated to respond symmetrically and raise the same threats for those territories where threats to us have arisen. 
Russia has frequently cautioned Finland and Sweden against joining NATO, claiming that the serious military and political consequences of doing so would force it to restore military balance in the Baltic Sea area, including the deployment of nuclear weapons. Russian officials have previously responded strongly to NATO's offer of membership to Finland and Sweden, calling it a destabilizing endeavor that would exacerbate regional tensions. We condemn the irresponsible course of the North Atlantic Alliance that is ruining the European architecture, or what's left of it, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov told reporters on Wednesday. We have a great deal of doubt as to whether the upcoming period will be calm for our North European neighbors, he added. However, the report was met coolly in Russia. According to Konstantin Kasachev, a member of Russia's Federation Council, Finland and Sweden joining NATO would certainly mean a worsening of relations between these two countries and Russia. He mentioned that Finland and Russia have a lengthy land border and that Russia and Sweden share interests in the Baltic and Barents Seas. All of this would definitely change for the worse, and definitely not at Russia's initiative, he said. This can only be regretted. The two nations joining NATO would signal the end of a decades-long status quo in which Finland, in particular, maintained a degree of neutrality during the Cold War in order to avoid a direct confrontation with the Soviet Union. Since the Cold War's conclusion, much has been disagreed about whether NATO enlargement adds to European security. Even staunch NATO allies have worried that enlargement would be too provocative to Russia. Indeed, throughout the last 15 years, Ukraine's ambitions to join the alliance have been hindered by concerns over Moscow's reaction. However, it was not Kyiv's desire to join NATO that prompted Russia to declare war on Ukraine. Rather, NATO's absence from Ukraine allowed it to invade. If Ukraine had been a member of NATO, Russia would have to go to war against the whole alliance, including the US. That is the conclusion Helsinki has reached. Of course, Moscow has vowed retaliatory measures, including the deployment of nuclear weapons in the Baltic area. This is probably just a bluff, because Russia had nuclear weapons in Kaliningrad, its Baltic Sea stronghold, long before the conflict. And the Kola Peninsula in northern Russia is home to one of the world's largest concentrations of nuclear weapons. Finland's accession to NATO will surely draw a broader and bolder line separating Europe, more than doubling NATO territory bordering Russia. Furthermore, NATO membership comes with duties, and by admitting Finland, the 30 present members agree to protect it in the event of an armed attack. That commitment is especially important at two points in the process, before and after formal ratification of their membership. The United States has also told NATO member countries that it takes their security seriously. However, there is a strong case to be made for Washington to go even further and officially state that if NATO issues an invitation, it is prepared to come to Finland's rescue. Finland will be covered by Article 5 assurance that an armed attack against one is an armed attack against all, as a full member. As a result, NATO will have to prepare specific contingency plans for defending Finland, something it has failed to do for many years since the Baltic nations joined NATO in 2004. Separately, NATO and its future members will have to decide whether to station alliance forces on their territory during peacetime, an issue that is now at the top of NATO's agenda in Eastern Europe as well. As a new member, Finland will also add significant military capabilities to the alliance, which will benefit not just their national defense, but also the rest of NATO. Finland has long invested in land, sea, and air forces that are as capable and well-trained as the greatest military in Europe. And it has already engaged in NATO military operations, adopting NATO communications and other aspects to assure interoperability. Perhaps most importantly, their membership will strengthen security in Northern Europe and the Baltic area. The split that existed in Northern Europe between Iceland, Norway, and Denmark as founder members on the one hand, and Sweden and Finland on the other hand will finally be bridged. The Baltic Sea's coasts will be in NATO nations, with the exception of two minor openings into Russia and Kaliningrad. Putin's attack on Ukraine had re-energized NATO in ways that few could have foreseen before the conflict began including Finland, will only enhance an alliance that is currently in its ninth decade of effectively ensuring Europe's security.